Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Well, as Sam Altman has learned this year, it is not easy being in the catbird seat in a highly competitive new industry. Ever since the launch of ChatGPT, OpenAI has pretty unassailably been the leader of the AI space. Now, this was something of a surprise to many in the field. How could, for example, Google have let this upstart, even a well-funded upstart, get so far ahead of them? when it came to something that they had long seen as one of the most important technologies for the coming decades. How could Meta find itself out on the back foot? Microsoft at least had cut a deal to be in OpenAI's orbit, but still the leadership of this startup was surprising. Being a leader, however, is not always easy, as of course it means that everyone is gunning for you. Interestingly, a few months ago, an insider at Google released a note that suggested that OpenAI's lead might not be as unassailable as it initially seemed, and that the source of its biggest competition was, unfortunately, not Google or any other centralized company, but the incredible explosion of open source AI efforts that had really come to the fore since the leak of Meta's Llama model. That piece began, We've done a lot of looking over our shoulders at OpenAI. Who will cross the next milestone? What will the next move be? But the uncomfortable truth is, we aren't positioned to win this arms race and neither is OpenAI. While we've been squabbling, a third faction has been quietly eating our lunch. I'm talking, of course, about open source. Plainly put, they're lapping us. Things we consider major open problems are solved and in people's hands today. While our models still hold a slight edge in terms of quality, the gap is closing astonishingly quickly. Open source models are faster, more customizable, more private, and pound for pound more capable. They're doing things with $100 and 13 billion parameters that we struggle with at 10 million and 540 billion. And they're doing so in weeks, not months. This has profound implications for us. Now, the note concludes that, ironically, it was Meta that was coming out ahead of this. The note's author wrote, Paradoxically, the one clear winner in all of this is Meta. Because the leaked model was theirs, they have effectively garnered an entire planet's worth of free labor. Since most open source innovation is happening on top of their architecture, there is nothing stopping them from directly incorporating it into their products. The value of owning the ecosystem cannot be overstated. Now, the one complaint or one thing holding Llama 1 back was that technically it was restricted for research purposes only. In other words, there wasn't a commercial license available alongside the technology. Now, of course, that didn't stop individual hackers from building things that they then released for profit, but it did put a damper on how much big enterprises or corporations were willing to build on top of what they had to offer. That, of course, was changed when they launched Llama 2 just about a month ago. The open source-ish release came with a commercial license that for companies who wanted to spin up their own AI solutions rather than buying something off the shelf made it look like a really attractive option. And indeed, one of the things that we've talked about frequently on this show is the extent to which many companies have decided to resolve concerns around security and data privacy and proprietary information by opting not to work with a startup like they might have used to in the context of a different technology and to instead use these widely available and well-supported open source models or open source-ish models. I don't want to get into a debate about that terminology right now to simply build the things that they need from the bottom up using their data inside their own walled gardens. If Llama 2 looked like a really strong attack on some of the other big closed source models, particularly OpenAI, the information is reporting that Meta is far from done. Yesterday, the information published a piece called Meta's Next AI Attack on OpenAI, Free Code Generating Software. They write, Meta Platforms is preparing to launch software to help developers automatically generate programming code, a challenge to proprietary software from OpenAI, Google, and others, according to two people with direct knowledge of the product. Meta's code-generating artificial intelligence model, dubbed CodeLama, will be open source and could launch as soon as next week. Now, this model builds on Meta's Llama 2 and is meant to rival OpenAI's Codex model, which currently powers coding assistants such as Microsoft's GitHub Copilot. The information gets the implications really clearly. They say that it could upend the AI field by making it easier for companies to make their own AI apps without paying for software from OpenAI, Google, or Microsoft. Now, part of the reason that this matters is that this is one of the clearest, most product market fitty use cases of AI so far. A GitHub survey earlier this year found that something like 97% of developers were already using AI assistance in their work. Industry commentators definitely see the relevant implications for the enterprise. Tim Chen, a managing partner of Essence VC, said, For enterprise adoption, this could be pretty big leverage to get people to use this much faster. If I'm Bank of America, I can fine-tune something on my own and have a really great model now that can generate a lot of specific code based on my existing code base. The information piece points out that 27,000 companies are currently paying for a GitHub Copilot enterprise license, but that, quote, Code Llama's release could represent a major disruption to the industry. The public release of a code generation model could make it easier for new competitors to get started or for large companies concerned about the security of their source code to build their own in-house models, making outside providers redundant. 
So if you're OpenAI, you have to be looking over at what Meta's doing with some really wary eyes, right? Luckily, though, you, of course, have your big partner in Microsoft, right? That gives you some extra big clout, right? Deeper pockets to pull from, more resources to go compete. Except that increasingly, Microsoft appears to be hedging its bets. First of all, when Meta announced Llama 2, they did it at a Microsoft conference with Microsoft as their main launch partner. One of the key takeaways from their press release was Microsoft and Meta are expanding their long-standing partnership with Microsoft as the preferred partner for Llama 2. Now, as if that weren't enough, the information also reported yesterday that Microsoft is planning an AI service with a new partner, Databricks, that might also be direct competition to OpenAI. The article starts, Microsoft has hitched its wagon to OpenAI when it comes to selling artificial intelligence that can understand language and write emails, meeting summaries, and slide decks. Now, Microsoft has found a second horse to ride in the AI race. Databricks, which has positioned itself as a kind of anti-OpenAI. So Databricks is one of these companies that is dealing with this exact issue that we were just discussing, which is that big enterprises are concerned about the potential for data leaks and proprietary information being fed into AI training of third-party models. And so what Databricks does is they help companies make their own AI models from scratch or take and repurpose existing open source models, effectively as an alternative for something like licensing OpenAI's APIs. According to three people with direct knowledge of the plans, Microsoft is planning to begin selling a version of Databricks software as part of its Azure Cloud Server unit. The information writes, In a touch of irony, Microsoft is using OpenAI's technology to create a ChatGPT-like chatbot to help less tech-savvy customers use Databricks software, which was originally developed for sophisticated data scientists. The net result could be that some Microsoft customers end up using open source models rather than OpenAI's closed source ones. Now, of course, you understand the logic if you are Microsoft. Just because you made a major investment in a company like OpenAI doesn't mean you want to put all of your eggs in that basket. What's more, holding aside the competitiveness, it seems quite clear that there is likely to be an ongoing market for OpenAI to the extent that they can continue to develop world-class models, even if what enterprise customers are looking for is something a little bit different than the OpenAI product offering. It's clearly not just Microsoft who's getting the picture that enterprises are going to want more boutique, customized options when it comes to integrating AI across their companies. Amazon Web Services, for example, has been screaming about exactly this, saying that there's no universe in which there's just one winning model, and the reason that they've created their Bedrock platform is to give enterprise customers the choice in which models they actually want to use and customize. Still, it's really fascinating to see how things are evolving in this field. It suggests very clearly to me, at least, that one, there's likely not going to be just one winner, and that two, companies are going to have to be extremely, extremely nimble to adapt to what the market is telling them about how companies and customers want to actually interact with this new technology. Interestingly, one of the flip sides of there being such clear use cases so fast, which is frankly a little bit different than most new technologies, is that it strikes me that customers, both on the individual and on the enterprise side, are more empowered to know more of what they want right away and ask for it from the companies they're going to interact with. This isn't a bad thing. It's just different than what we've seen with previous technologies. But then again, there's a lot about AI that makes it not exactly like previous technologies. Anyway, fascinating little moment in the evolution of the AI space, but I certainly wouldn't count OpenAI out yet. Later this weekend, we're going to take a look at Google specifically, and all of the rumors and innuendo about what might be coming down the pipeline for them. For now, that's going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.